great pleasure, first of all, to welcome all of our Imagine Museum uh, friends and members that have joined us on this Zoom. I also want to say hello to all of our uh, Facebook followers who are joining us this morning as we um, actually have a fabulous conversation and some uh, video with Winnie Teschmacher, who, is, who comes to us from the Netherlands. Now, I uh, met Winnie just a couple of years ago, and I was fascinated not only by her and her sculpture, but then when I had the opportunity to hear her talk about her career and her life, I, I just thought that this woman is, uh, she is a force to be reckoned with, and we are so pleased to have her work uh, in the museum. So if you could see behind me a little bit, uh, you see that I'm in the gallery that is called the Contemporary European Masters. So for those of you in St. Petersburg, you're, you'll want to find this work on the second floor of the museum uh, in the, the uh, European Masters uh, gallery. So I urge you to come and see the work. So welcome, Winnie. Thank so, you. Winnie, do you want to give a little introduction on the uh, video we're about to see? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, uh, first of all, uh, Imagine Museum and Natalia and you, of course, Jane, for making this possible. It's incredible and all the technical stuff that we managed, I think. And uh, I'm glad to be there and uh, I'm glad that there are so many people watching us. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, what we're going to see, uh, I made a small video uh, with a tour through my studio and my exhibition space and office and I'm speaking a little bit of, uh, of my way of working and uh, well, we can just hit the road and then I will, can, uh, I will start talking after that a little bit more. But then you have a nice introduction, the place where I live and uh, where I am now at this very moment. Fantastic. Let me show you inside my studio. <laughs> Welcome in my studio. This is the old barn and uh, I'm living here already for 30 years. And when I came here, the cows were still in this barn. I chased them away, of course, and um, outdoors. And then uh, I rebuilt this place in a year, I think, into a studio, which is rather a big luxury uh, because it's 200 square meters which is big, so I can make my work, I can have the machines, uh, whatever, I can leave some works that I'm working on, I don't need to be like this. And uh, before that I had a studio in The Hague, which was rather big, but not as this. Uh, and it, I must say, it changed my way of working, because I have a lot of uh, outdoor space, and I have indoor space as well. So this is the part of my studio that's the cold part, the cold studio. It's all the machines for the optical glass cutting and grinding and whatever. Uh, I've been lucky to uh, be taught in uh, the Czech Republic. I started there 33 years ago, 32 years ago, with um, uh, learning the crafts for cutting and grinding. I already had my studio for glass blowing, but this was the cold studio. So I'm lucky that we could build this studio together with the Czech uh, friends. And all of these machines is old fashioned cutting material, the cutting wheel with all the wheels down, the saw, all these machines that have uh, cutting and polishing wheels. I'm in too nice clothes today, so I'm not going to show the trade, but you can uh, see it in another way. This oh, also, these kind of machines, the big wheels with uh, the carbide water 
And it's just hours and hours and hours and hours of work. In a way, it's a sort of meditative uh, state that you enter when you work. Of course, you need your concentration. The moment you lose it, forget it, skip the day and start another one. Uh, it's nice over here because it's quiet. I'm the only one making the sound, uh, the noise. I've got the space and, of course, um, all the possibilities. Uh, so I'm lucky to have this. So this is the, the one that it's the final, the final thing. It's the polishing machine, the polishing wheel. It's a very flat metal with very thin felt on top of it. And uh, of course you work with the powder and the water and then you hold the glass. This is, uh, this is how it works. It's a very old fashioned way in uh, these kind of machines, but I love them. And uh, this is high concentration like the rest of the, uh, of the work as well. But you know, when you make one mistake over here, it's, I mean, gone, the piece is over and you can start all over again. So you have to be patient, you have to take care, and when you have a bad day, go and drink a cup of coffee, but stop the work and just start another day. This is the second part of my studio, you could say. It's the place that I tend to say that I do the clean work, as far as you can call it clean. But uh, there is really the rough, the wet, the, the, the dusty and everything. And here, I, on this table, I do gluing, cutting and uh, whatever. I have my drawing table for the designing of the stuff. Uh, and here I have the kiln, all the materials, tools, etc. And my stock uh, place uh, with all the pieces, all the works that are finished and a lot of space, because now it's rather open. I must say it's a rather cleaned up studio. Uh, I didn't do it for the video, but it, it was the way it is now. Uh, usually I make mock-ups over here, or I do whatever, but there's a little bit more mess. But it's important to have the space so that I can try and test out all the works. And I can do works next to each other. So I'm working here, I'm working over there, different places. Sometimes even outdoors, if it's too messy, then I go over there. Um, well, and then I'm lucky that I have another space as well, because on top of this is the old uh, hay, sta the old hay uh, place. So I had an attic. And uh, when the cows were here, it was filled with hay and they could throw it through uh, some opening. Of course, I changed that. So uh, I rebuilt upstairs as well. And I'm lucky to have uh, my own exhibition space in my office over there. So let me take you upstairs. So this is my treasure. It's my exhibition space. It's my own space and uh, once that I had this space, like I said, the hay attic, uh, and we started to rebuild this because it was were very dark and only with one window. And we started to rebuild this, make the new roof and all these windows. I mean, my, my biggest uh, uh, challenge, of course, is to get over the view so that the people say, wow, that's good glass, nice glass, and not, wow, what a nice view. So uh, it's always a challenge to have my works over here. And I'm glad to have it because usually I finished my work, you pack it into the card uh, box or whatever into the box, and then you see it again in the gallery or in the museum. And uh, it's way better to have it here first to test if it's really good and sometimes of course you have to say mm, no it's not the way I want it uh, so it's it's good for my own perception and to have the time to test is it really work that I want to show to other people so I'm lucky like I already said that I can walk over here I can have all the works that are finished over here and uh, enjoy them myself, but also to show them to people who 
uh, have take the effort to uh, to come to this place. And um, on the same floor here, I have my uh, office with all the books, and um, especially uh, when I'm trying to figure out new works, I'm working also in the office. Uh, like I said, this is my office, and uh, it's the best because I have everything over here. It's all the books and, and all my thinking I can do over here. Uh, it has the computer, everything, and of course it's a little bit of a mess, but uh, for me it's, it's rather clean and empty. Um, so I also stay here very often to rethink my work, to do everything that's needed behind the computer, and uh, or just to to enjoy my music or or reading the books. And uh, it's it's also uh, I'm I'm glad to uh, to have this space, and maybe one day you'll see it. <laughs> well, I love that. I would like one day to come and visit Winnie. <laughs> Welcome. I'm just, I'm just putting in my my uh, my little uh, request right there. Yes, um, you're welcome. So we're going to be moving on to another uh, a video that uh, we put together, and but uh, talk a little bit about the video that we're going to see. And I I understand you you actually will be narrating the video live as you show the video. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to say a couple of words before we run the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will. It's a, it's a sort of burst of images because uh, I like to overload uh, people with many images. And uh, what I show in the video is that my sources of a couple of sources of inspiration, some artists that I really admire, some travels that I did that inspired me, and of course works of art by me. And it's not chronological, it's just mishmashed through, through one another. And uh, I will talk with these uh, uh, images and I will try to narrate as good as possible. And before we start, I want to say that um, I started in 1980 with glass and I started with lamp glass blowing. That was my first love. And when I started my studio in 83, I also went into the fusing and the bending of float glass. And I was an assistant in a hot shop in The Hague. And uh, when I came to the studio here in, uh, in, in Vlaardingen, the, the one that you saw now, that was in 89. Um, before that time, I think 86 or 87, I went to Czechoslovakia, still Czechoslovakia at that time. And there I started with the optical glass with uh, Jan Friedrich and I'm still he's the best in the world best master in the world in, in optical glass and uh, I think and uh, I still work together with him and for the difficult uh, all the difficult uh, sculptures he is the master so I'm I'm uh, I have to honor him really he is so important for me so and the rest uh, oh, I will try to talk over the images uh, so this was uh, what you saw, my, my place. On the left is my uh, little village uh, with the haystack and uh, the studio and my house. I live and work here, especially now during lockdown. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, source of inspiration is architecture. This is a bridge by Santiago Calatrava, a Spanish architect. And uh, he makes fantastic uh, buildings, bridges, etc. This is a drawing by him. He is inspired by animals and by the human being and the, the right proportions and dimensions in these uh, people. This is a sculpture by me from the 90s. It's bent float glass. You can see it, it's laminated and two pieces, they hold each other in balance. Another one from the same uh, time, mid 90s. And uh, it would be wonderful if it would be a building one of these days. I don't know if you feel the urge to, to ask, please do. Um, also big, I'm in the metric system. So this is two meters uh, stretched, uh, big balls like a leaf. And you will recognize the shape, the form in other sculptures. 
this also i very often make sculptures that exist from two the same uh, shapes the same forms the same sort of uh, boat shape but a little bit more a little bit uh, smaller is the optical glass uh, this is also from the end of the 90s and this is cast glass one meter wide also from the end of the 90s and in the next slide you will see uh, the source of inspiration which is the desert i did many travels together with a friend of mine she is an adventurer Ar arita Bayant, and then we travel through the desert with the camels and uh, we walk into nothing from nowhere to nowhere and the only thing that you can do is not think but just be there at the very moment, there's nothing else. So you see us here and uh, they, these travels brought me really a lot and also a lot of uh, silence, you could say, and, and uh, being there in the very moment. So this is also optical piece uh, from the beginning of this millennium, I think, or the end of the nineties. And the inspiration for this is uh, the uh, religious buildings, churches, cathedrals, temples what have you and that one part of inspiration the the, the the religious buildings like this one in florence with the cupola by brunelleschi um, is one part and the other source of inspiration is the void the nothingness this also is inspired by a religious building and you will see it it's the stupa and uh, the stupa that you see now uh, is in Sanchi in India. It's the oldest stupa in India. And I'm completely convinced that uh, all these religious buildings, if it's a mosque, a church, a temple, what have you, uh, that they all come from the same source. They all have this sacred geometry in them. And I try to, to honor that and also use the sacred geometry for my sculptures. So they have to be very precise in measurements, in dimensions, in everything. And of course, uh, the shape, the form that I use, I make an abstraction of uh, these religious buildings. Uh, this is a well-known stupa in Nepal, in Kathmandu. And this is the translation of a stupa in Japan, one of my very favorite countries. It's the pagoda. And uh, uh, also this has so many symbols in it. It's, this is an older sculpture, also from the 90s. It's blown glass uh, and under that is wood with leaf gold. And uh, this also is blown glass with uh, leaf gold and uh, called Trinity. This is my holy Trinity, the abstraction of it, of course. It's almost one meter 20 high. This is uh, five elements in Japan. It's also a sort of Buddhistic stupa, but then in a different way. And you call it the Gorinto. Uh, this is Cairo in the citadel uh, in the middle of the mosque. This building, uh, you can also see this sort of buildings with the same dimensions uh, in the Hinduistic uh, architecture. And this is again my abstraction of uh, that building. It has the right proportions, it had the right, right dimensions. This also, but then very flat. You see, I use a six square or eight square or a real square under a dome kind of uh, shape. Like this is a six square with a dome. And this one you can relate to the Dome of the Rock uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, this one is at Habitat uh, Gallery now. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be able to work with them already for years and they do have uh, uh, many of my pieces now, uh, so you can always have a look with them. Uh, also, uh, optical glass, uh, it's very nice that um, 20 years back, I think, the Chinese started to make the colored optical glass. This is uh, not optical, but this is cast glass with this uh, really uh, incredible uranium yellow color. It's, uh, it, it gives light. 
one of my favorite artists. This is Building for a Void, uh, Anish Kapoor. And how do you think of that? I mean, a building for a void. This is a cross section. What you see is this bubble hanging under that. That's really a void. So if you go into the building, the only thing that you see is this, a blue dot. And then, but under this blue dot is this uh, bulb, is this drop with blue pigment. Please look him up, uh, Anish Kapoor, he is wonderful. This is my void. And uh, that's also in the collection of the Imagine. So uh, that's very good that you have this because this is one of my first blue sculptures. Also by Anish Kapoor, you must know this because it's in Chicago, Cloud Gate one of his biggest sculptures. And, and you have to stand under this, it's, it's wow. Um, the Pantheon in Rome, it has this oculus in the top and it's a sphere, it's a complete sphere. So if you stand in the Pantheon, like I am here, you stand in this sphere. And uh, when I was there for a week, I went there every morning as the first, so I could be there alone. The rest of the day, you can forget it. It's overcrowded. Uh, this is my Oculus also, um, one of the abstractions of the religious buildings, the architecture. Um, this is one of the latest sculptures. Uh, I think a couple of months ago, I finished this one. It's absolutely very silent, very quiet and for me. Uh, it stands also for the lockdown period. This is James Terrell, Roden Crater, near Flagstaff, uh, Arizona. Please Google James Terrell and Roden Crater. This is the biggest work of art in the world. It's his observatory. He's already working for 40 years. And uh, James Terrell, his, uh, his material is light. So I'm here with his golden stairs and up is the opening to the sky. The only thing that he does is making buildings and especially this crater to experience the light. That's the only thing and everything is perfect. Everything is wonderful. I was there for a whole day and uh, when I, I look now at the sky here, it's a skyscape and because it is uh, sort of uh, bounded, it has, has a boundary, you look at the light in a different way. You see the changing of the light. It's so wonderful. So um, it's not open yet. I don't know when it's going to open ever, but please uh, look him up. It's, uh, it's one of the best artists in the world. And um, Focus, this uh, sculpture is uh, in one of my favorite uh, collector's home. I know that in California um, and a big lens uh, shape. I very often also work with the lenses in my sculptures and it looks like they float in the sculpture, but most of the time it's somewhere on the bottom. The, the golden egg of Brahma, it's uh, always the beginning of a new cycle. It also uh, uh, means very many cycles that I went through. This is my translation into a cosmic egg. It's hot glass. It's also from the 90s and uh, it's a solid piece with this small bubble inside. Uh, the same as this piece, it's completely uh, finished, polished, and it's one egg around everything. It's, I like the shape of an egg and um, I made many sculptures with that shape. And in the same time, I made a whole series of pendulums. Uh, this is also hot glass uh, with this bubble also here, hot glass. Sometimes I made the pendulums in a complete installation and sometimes just as one pendulum with something hanging, uh, something under it. In the same time, I made uh, with the hot glass black a whole black series black glass solid pieces these are the way the guards of the world and also this egg uh, at my house this is also i i want to make another series with the black glass because i think it's amazing what it does another uh, inspirational uh, source that's wolfgang leip he is working with pollen from the flowers it takes him months to collect in his own fields. 
and he makes this square on the floor with the pollen and it's so intense and i mean this is thousands of flowers the pollen from that and uh, it's it's incredible what he does and the meditation the 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 inspiration and the dedication that this guy has is uh, is wonderful i mean i must say it's it's uh, uh, you have to see a sculpture by him one day uh, this uh, is also at your museum, Jane, and I see it standing behind you, so I'm glad that it's over there. And of course, I think for every artist, the sky, the clouds, and the mountains, always, they, they inspire me anyway, and uh, especially when you have a view like that. This is in uh, Mexico, one of the uh, pyramids that's over there. I, I really like the, the Aztec and the Inca pyramids in Guatemala, Peru, and Mexico. And they are so powerful. So I make my own abstraction uh, in a clear optical glass. And another uh, religious building, this is a mosque in Indonesia. I was surprised to see that the first time, that they make mosques like this. I mean, we're used with the, uh, the mosque with the dome or whatever, but they make mosques like that. And uh, here you, other, you see another abstract uh, uh, work of art inspired by these mosques. Uh, these are many pieces laminated together and you can imagine i mean this this need to be uh, on the mill it has to be very precise purple flame uh, a sculpture that uh, took a long time to finally make it and that it has the right dimensions and also the right power the right energy meditation a double sculpture who exact the same uh, shapes one is polished the other one I stopped, Mott. Uh, and wow, yes, Marina Abramovich. This is an amazing artist. Uh, the artist is present. She is a performance artist. This is uh, in 2010 in the MoMA in New York. She did a performance for three months, sitting, only sitting there, silent. Look it up on Google uh, because this was an amazing uh, performance. I saw it and I went there straight away. I was there for a week, went every day. And uh, two times I was able to sit opposite of her. And it was so powerful. It was really mind blowing. And uh, I'm glad that, uh, that I could work with her afterwards a couple of times in a project space that I run. And uh, she is one of the best artists in the world. This is uh, this came uh, basically also from performances like that. I mean, double sculptures, yin yang, two uh, making it stronger. So it's not one and one is two, but one and one is three. I think touching the void. This one. Uh, and one of my travels that also gave me a burst in awareness. Uh, this is Siberia, the Altai Mountains. We went there uh, also together with uh, Arita Bayans, my friend, on the Mongolian horses. It's the only way that you can come to the Mount Beluga, the holy mountain, and the highest lake in the world. Either you walk or you sit on a horse. Well, this was a rainy day. I was completely soaked, but I still, well, you can see I was still laughing. And um, uh, it, it was, uh, I, I burst into tears when I saw the lake and the mountain for the first time. It was so overwhelming. And um, so it was one of the wonderful travels that I made. And um, this is one of the sculptures, it's called I Am. It's also black glass, but you see this wave of violet in it. Black is never black, really. It's, it's a little bit purple, violet, or blue. And so it's a very silent sculpture to say, and uh, and so means circle in Japanese. Zero point, uh, also um, related to the sculpture that, that Jane has behind her, the double sculpture, yellow one. And this is also behind Jane. It's uh, the blue disc, uh, the discus. It's, um, uh, I'm, I'm glad that it's in the, in the museum so that a lot of people can see it. 
because it has a big power, I think. Japan, one of my favorite countries from the last couple of years. This is Koyasan, the holy mountain, and a perfect day for making a picture, of course. The uh, purple flame again, but in a different way. And you saw the, the inspiration just before this. And uh, here you see a complete different sculpture. It's two exactly the same shapes. If you put them together, it's an exact cube. And in the middle, you have this uh, bubble. Uh, this is an other way of looking at it. So you see what it does. It's uh, with a picture, it's always the the stand, the point, uh, point of stand, how do you say that, the, po the point of view, I choose that, or the photographer chooses that, and that's only one way of looking. I mean, this is one way of looking at the sculpture, but there are so many more ways of looking, so uh, phot photo is always limited. And Japan again, this is one of the biggest graveyards in, uh, also on Koyasan, I walked there for hours, and if you ever are in Japan, please visit the graveyards. James Jarrell, also in Japan, the house of light. I was there for 24 hours on my own with the skyscape, etc. It was mind blowing. And this is also Japan Hiroshi Sugimoto. It's a glass, glass podium. Do you see that? And it's, it's his observatory. Uh, if you are in Japan, of course, you have to visit the Golden Pavilion, but it looks like I was there on my own, but it was Disneyland. There were so many people. It was horrible, but the Golden Pavilion is wonderful. Um, and uh, one of my pyramids. I love the pyramid. We will come back to that when we, uh, when we talk about the sculpture that's now in Imagine. Also, this one is next to uh, Jane, this was a commission. I, I do commissions a lot, but uh, not so many in this kind of sculptures. I'm glad that I did it. It took a little bit more than a year, but uh, well, then uh, finally you have something. Touching the void in another uh, di dimensions. And these, this is one of the new sculptures. I just uh, finished a couple of uh, months ago. A conus shape again, but also with this little lens in it and also one of the new sculptures uh, a double piece also conus with this white uh, opaque color uh, i definitely will start working more with that color if i can get it um, and then this is the first work that i made with lotsky in the czech republic i hope to make work, more work with the studio and i'm very glad with the result and this is the last sculpture, a very small one, but uh, also one of the latest sculptures. Finished. I'm unmuting myself. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so how fabulous is that? I was, I was right, wasn't I, to say that you are a um, woman uh, artistic, creative woman of, uh, of having a lot of insight and impact with your sculpture. Um, I, again, I will say, come to Imagine Museum and to see some of the, the pieces because the optical work, the photos were beautiful, as a matter of fact, when you, those were fabulous photos. But to see the work in person, when you can see how light plays on them, it's really just, uh, it's, it's a real treat. And uh, as I was telling uh, Winnie earlier that I was so fortunate to, uh, we, we kept the Imagine Museum open uh, throughout the year. We only closed for five weeks, but it was such a pleasure to be able to walk into our galleries. And for me, to be able to take the positive energy, the energy that is contained in so many of these sculptures, um, that it certainly has uh, made my year, uh, I could have, I was more uplifted by the beauty of the museum and I'm very happy that I had that. Um, mm. and, and just because I know Peter's on this call too, we have uh, galleries filled with Peter's work also, which is as uh, uplifting as well in a totally different way, but all still very, um, uh, humbling to actually observe and to see an uplifting 
uh, as well. So um, we're going to move on. I'm going to do a little transition. Uh, one of the other exhibitions we have at the museum, we call it uh, Op Art Glass, and uh, it's optical art. We did a call to artists and uh, to submit works that they felt went with the uh, idea of optical glass. And we were so happy. I followed you on Facebook, Winnie, when you were doing this a couple of that piece a couple of years ago, and I was so delighted that that was. Uh, the piece that you chose. We do have a video and then we'll talk a little bit about that uh, on the other side of the video. Yes, okay. Can I just talk over this? Maybe this is a good idea. Yeah? You hear me because this is in a installation it's a big pyramid that i made seven by seven meters and it has absolutely the same dimensions and also even the same direction as the pyramid in gizeh uh, i think that the same energy is in this pyramid as in the pyramid of gizeh and uh, you were able to go inside you can see that uh, it's called Space of Silence, and people, many people visited this, and they really experienced silence in this uh, structure. It was in a big exhibition that I organized with 20 artists, and it was an incredible big warehouse. So I really uh, made a hole in the floor, you can see that. So you went down in the pyramid, and you could sit there and um, many people came back to just be there and experience the uh, this space of silence under the the pendulum is a bowl a big bowl and that's sitting on a half uh, sphere kind of uh, wooden structure so and it the only thing it touches one mill so it's everything is in balance it's equilibrium it's Everything is in balance with each other. So, yeah. You have to unmute, uh, Jane. Yeah. We didn't have a warehouse to show that piece in, but we do have it so. hanging uh, beautifully in one of our galleries. And the, the exactness of that prism and, and how, the, the prism uh, reflects all around the room. You could walk through the gallery, around the gallery, peek in, and there's always these colors that are coming out and grabbing you to go in. It's, it's really just a, a fantastic piece and, and was wonderful to have you be part of the, uh, that show, the optical art show. Uh, as well as to be, uh, I feel adorned by all of your work behind me. I do believe that it also has very positive energy. Mm, so um, any uh, other comments that you would like to uh, talk to um, our fellow Zoomers uh, about your work and about that piece in particular? Well, you know, that piece is, uh, it's, it's important for me. Uh, the first time that I uh, made this pendulum, uh, it was only with this big bowl and the wooden structure under it. And I, and it was in a museum in Holland. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit scared with hanging and, and stuff like that. And then I released the, the fixtures that I made and, and suddenly it started moving. And I thought, Wow, this is the Perpetuum Mobile. I, I figured it out. But then the people over there, they said, wow, now we have a problem. It just starts moving by itself. What's happening? Because when this happens in the night, the alarm will go off. <laughs> huh? So, yeah. So, but what, what was the idea? There was a, a, a door five, 10 meters away. When people entered this big door, of course, there was a little bit of wind. And then like 10 seconds later, this wind arrived at the pendulum and then it started moving. So people were like, huh, 
what's happening? It just starts. So uh, for me, this was uh, wonderful. And maybe it also happens with you. <laughs> I hope so. So that would be nice. Yeah. There, there is something. There is, there is emotion. It's, it's, um, it's very subtle, but I think it yeah. just has to do with the vibration of the building and perhaps as people walk through the gallery, I do believe there's probably some kind of draft yeah. that, that follows uh, behind it because it does move. And that's yeah. what creates all of the, the lights, which is, is uh, just a, a stunning piece. And oh, thank you. Uh, so much in tune with, uh, with all of your inspiration, which, uh, you know, I've seen some of your presentations and it, it's just wonderful to see your inspirations um, and how that then becomes uh, communicated through your through your artwork. Just really fabulous. Just really mm. terrific. So, do we have any questions from the audience at all? Yeah, I see something. Uh, Lawrence, uh, is the base glued to the dome? Oh, so that's some time ago. Yes, the base is glued to the dome. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. All the pieces that are uh, made from different parts, they are glued, uh, which is uh, a big challenge, I must say. It doesn't always work. Uh, and uh, Harold and Myra, hi. Uh, do you see any relations between your work and that of Ziegler and Wiesner? Well, yes, of course. Um, Ziegler, uh, even though my, my education is... Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm originally educated on an academy, but that was the academy for, academy for physical education. So I'm a sports teacher. And then I uh, did the academy for arts uh, two years in the evening, and, but I was way too obnoxious. I stopped over there. So uh, I'm, I'm basically self-taught. And um, uh, since I went to Jan Friedrich, uh, which, uh, which was a, still a great teacher also for me, uh, Jan uh, makes many of the works for, for Ziegler, as you know. And, um, but if I would have ever had a teacher in glass, a professor, uh, I, I would have loved to be taught by Ziegler. I already know him for, for a long time and uh, I wish I could have been one of his students, absolutely. And Fiesner, I, I did meet him in, during symposia and uh, things like that. He was a very quiet person and he just sat there and worked for five, six days on one sculpture and I was amazed. That was a big inspiration because he was just working and working and working. And in the final presentation, during a symposium, which has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, craziness, there was this one silent, small sculpture. And for me, that was the best. That was really, wow. So his silence, his... Um, yeah, it's his focus. That's a big inspiration for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good, I hope that's a good answer for you, uh, Harold and Myra. Yes. And uh, somebody was asking whether this is going to be recorded and it will be. It's actually going to be uh, living in our Facebook page and very shortly after it will be on our YouTube as well. Good. Okay. So uh, now we will, we're inviting to, we're going to unmute everybody. So if anybody have questions. Any questions? Even on Facebook, because we can just, you know, state them. Yeah. And if not, if we don't have any questions at this point, then um, what I would like to uh, encourage everyone who is, has watched on Facebook or has joined us on Zoom, uh, I do want to thank you for coming out and uh, uh, participating in this, uh, hearing about this wonderful artist uh, that we have in our collection. I would encourage you if you make it to St. Petersburg or you live in the surrounding area, uh, our galleries have never looked better. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Our goal for this year is uh, we are, you know, imagining the world since travel is so uh, curtailed because of uh, the virus. And uh, we decided we'd take you on a journey and show you glass artists from uh, around the world. And, and it's a spectacular presentation. And uh, uh, it's something that I think it's worth your while. We practice all the safety protocols. So uh, we'd love to see you out here. Winnie, so we, have I... a, we have a question actually from Facebook, okay. speaking about travel. So uh, Gabriela was, is asking you, what is your next uh, destination to travel to for the inspiration after the lockdown? <laughs> That's after the, yeah, it's a good question. Well, after the lockdown, Japan uh, again, uh, because I've been there now for three or four times. And um, uh, then I, I really travel to works of art, uh, nature, museum, but also friends over there. And for me, it would be wonderful to also stay there maybe for some time, maybe, maybe even a couple of months in the residency. I don't know. But it, for me, that's, that's uh, such a, a crazy, fantastic a country, complete different culture. But um, I don't know. I feel at home over there. I try to learn the language, which, which is incredible, difficult. So, but, you know, even if you speak five words, it's, uh, it's nice. And I love the food, of course. <laughs> yes, but the first travel, I guess, after lockdown will be Czech Republic for my work. But the bigger, one of the bigger travels, Japan, and of course, to your country, to the States. Yeah. I mean, I hope to come whenever we can and, and travel maybe with, with my dear friend, Peter, to, to, to the States and to Habitat or whatever. I, I, I think they will be in... September, maybe opening something physical like an exhibition, and uh, and of course to uh, finally see Imagine as well. Yeah, we're keeping our fingers crossed, Winnie. We are absolutely keeping our fingers crossed. I have a question yeah. for her. Yes. Yes. I would like to know if she has ever seen Constance New Babylon in The Hague, and if yes. she was inspired by that. Uh, um, it's a good question. Of course, I saw it because Constant is uh, one of our heroes in Holland, and and The Hague was my uh, the country, the, the state city that I lived. Uh, I know the, the the sculpture, the the idea, the his uh, his whole thinking very well. Uh, it also has been in in Documenta, which was a fantastic presentation that time. Uh, I must say, uh, you bring me to an idea. Uh, because I never related it to my own work, but uh, it would be wonderful to dive in again in his uh, thinking because it's uh, it's an amazing uh, uh, thinking that he had with this a philosophy that Constant has. Yes, absolutely. So, so thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. What about Australia? Are you? Um, is that is that a country? Or I'm thinking of Ayers Rock and. <laughs> Well, you, you see me already jumping. You know, <laughs> if I'm in Japan, it's only the same distance to, to go to Australia. But I must say the last uh, 12 and a half, 13 years, I also uh, managed a project space in, in, in Holland. Uh, I'm, I'm the boss of that space uh, with contemporary art, uh, not specifically glass, but contemporary art. So I, I was uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, not able to go for half a year or whatever. Uh, and Australia is a place that I definitely want to visit. I have a couple of friends over there that I, I still say, yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. But uh, so maybe that's now in the near future when uh, that I would like to, uh, to go. And I also love a lot of uh, the glass artists that come from Australia, absolutely a very good culture you have over there with a couple of people coming from uh, from the schools yeah i recently That's saw the film nomad um and that is by werner herzog and yeah. uh he took us from patagonia uh yeah. bruce chadwin's life and so yeah. it came to australia and it came to patagonia and so i see these massive nature uh, spaces uh as yeah. spiritual as what you're saying the buildings could be yes yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the nice thing of being an artist, we always have a good excuse to travel. Uh, 
<laughs> and uh, and the best way to travel is if you have uh, either works of art that you want to visit or artists or so I the best way of traveling is through your own work I always want to do something or to not just be a tourist but really work over there or or be there in in you know behind the touristic thing that's, yeah. And is your work uh, something that you would like to install in such grand spaces? I, I'm thinking of Postonia Yama in, in uh, you know, in Eastern Europe. There, there are caves. There are. I met an, a glass artist, and she said she was going to put her glass pieces into giant caves. And so I just, yeah. it fascinated me. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's all uh, my whole a whole series of my works is called Spaces of Silence. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, like this pyramid that I made, if you really make an installation or a room or a, a, a cave or what have you uh, as one work of art, I, I think that's the best. Like yeah. Terrell with this rodent crater, like the House of Light by mm -hmm. Terrell, like so many of the artists, especially in America, that you have mm -hmm. the lightning field by Walter Maria. And, I mean, you have the travel, you are like a pilgrim. Finally, you are there, you can stay there for 24 hours. I mean, wow, you know, that's so intense. So yes, uh, if you have an idea, I will be there. No well, problem. Spiral Jetty has resurfaced, you know this on Salt Lake. So. I know, I know. <laughs> you I have know. to wait a while, so. There are some things that are fantastic. Yep. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Great. Great. Are there any other questions for Winnie? I have one for Winnie, if I may, Jane. Go Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan. If you have you ever considered another material? I mean, glass seems so perfect for you to work in. Have you ever, mm. ever thought of another material? I worked already with metal, wood, photography, uh, and many other uh, materials, uh, most of the time for commissions, because I made a lot of uh, big architectural uh, commissions. I didn't show any of them now, but uh, they push me sometimes into other materials. And uh, so I do work with that. But to be able to make my uh, sculptures with the other materials, Yes, definitely yes, but I need a little bit more space in my head for that. And I can assure you uh, from 2022, it will happen. Yes. Good. Yeah. And since Peter is on, I want to also uh, encourage people to come out to the Imagine Museum because Peter is our featured artist for the year. He is our artist of the future. We have two galleries. Uh, that are just uh, filled with exceptional work, also in, uh, much of it inspired from nature, as well as uh, our, our own sense of being and our own uh, internal dialogue that we have. Uh, so thanks, Peter. Thanks for joining. And yeah. uh, any other questions out there before we close out for the uh, afternoon? We'll let Winnie and Peter to go and have their glass of wine since it's uh, yeah. almost dinner time. <laughs> I will say I will say a little bit more, a little bit more uh, because Peter is a very good friend of mine. We already know each other for a long time, but uh, we're all also uh, sometimes a bit partners in crime. Uh, one of my uh, the first start for me in the states was in two thousand one. The beginning of September, we opened uh, together, Peter and me, uh, an exhibition, and we uh, flew back to to Holland. And once we uh, hit the uh, the ground in Holland again, the the towers came down. So this was a monumental time, uh, and I sort of. Uh, not stopped, but I, I didn't really push through it in, in the States. Peter did, as you know, perfect. I admire him a lot for all his uh, power and effort uh, in, 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 in this. And um, I'm glad that uh, 
uh, he also sometimes for me is like, oh, uh, what's that space or what's that? So uh, I'm glad that we both are from the Netherlands and that we are, know each other already for, I don't know, 30 years or what? Oh man, I'm too old. Anyway, long time. <laughs> well, we've, we've been very supportive to each other against all odds, I would say. And uh, um, we, we don't see each other a whole lot, but we do mirror, I think we do mirror each other in, in our personalities and in our work. And uh, uh, when we have conversations, they're always joyful and, and they're deep, and which, is, which is great, which is wonderful. Um, support for artists you know I think I think we uh, we're always looking for a kind of a <laughs> almost say, say a bouncing ball you know somebody yeah. that you can throw the ball at and the ball comes back and there's a little uh, extra just because you can bounce you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's uh, that's the wonderful thing I think about uh, the glass community all around the world. Uh, my myself have not been uh, as many years as you all, but certainly have always felt welcome. And uh, it, it 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 is such a delight to know you both and to know you in the way that I do know you as artists in this museum. So, thanks so much. Uh, any Thank other you. questions? And uh, I see that people are starting to leave. So I'm sure we're getting close to our hour. Yep. And uh, so anyway, if, I, if there's not any last questions, I would just like to thank everyone for uh, sharing this Zoom with us. And Winnie, thanks so much. I know it took a lot of time for you to pull this together with uh, Natalia and our staff. So. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to be able to see you today and to talk to you and to, uh, I look forward to where we can see each other face to face. Absolutely. I love the, the to-do is, and uh, I'm very thankful that you organized this. So thanks everybody. My pleasure. Okay, so long everyone. We'll see you the next time. <laughs>